Okay, so we're still in Module 3, Customizing the QuickBooks Environment, and we're at a really important section now. This is the first part of the chart of accounts. Now, if there's any place in QuickBooks that you need to have information correct, that's going to be in the chart of accounts. This is the most important thing in here, because if it's not set up correctly, then when you run reports, you're going to get inaccurate data, or you'll see things are missing, or you may not even notice at all. So we're going to go through each one of these, talk a little bit about how they work and which ones you need to be setting up. Now remember, here's how you get to the chart of accounts. It's right here on your home screen, so don't forget where this is. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now if you remember, when we went through the Easy Step interview, it asked us a lot of different questions, and I had told you that based on how you answered the questions, it was going to create a generic chart of accounts for you and this is what it came up with. Now you're going to add a lot of things to this list and you may not get it all when you first sit down. You might work for six months and decide there's a new one that you need, but at least know how to set it up so when you're ready to do that you know where to go and that sort of thing. Now a couple things as well. We had talked earlier about the fact that you may or may not want the general ledger numbers. So remember those were under the preferences. Let me show you where they were again. If you went to Edit, Preferences, you want to be under the very first option under Accounting, and then you go to Company Preferences. And the first option is Use Account Numbers. So I was telling you earlier, this is where you can turn them on or off if you want them. Okay, so what I want to do is talk about the different types of accounts that this list holds. Now remember, first of all, the reason you have this is because every single thing in QuickBooks will relate back to this somehow. If you spend money, you're going to have to tell it, was it an insurance expense? Did I go out to eat? If you receive money, was it a sale from the business? Was it a reimbursed expense? So everything in QuickBooks relates back to this somehow. So we'll be talking a lot about this as we go through the rest of the videos. Now these are set up by type, and you'll notice if the type is the same, then the name is in alphabetical order. If you were using the general ledger numbers, they'd be in numerical order. Also notice for a lot of these, you have a balance total over on the right. When you get down to where the income and expenses are, you won't have a balance. You'd have to actually run a report to see the transactions that fall under those particular categories. Also notice you can attach a file over here for any of these. So you just double click where you see the little paper clip here and it would let you attach a file. So let's start off talking about the different ones you'll want to add. And the first type that I want to start with are what they call bank accounts. Now a bank account would be any account that you have at the bank. So think about you're going to have checking accounts. You're going to have savings accounts, you're going to have money market accounts. Some of you might have an actual little petty cash box that you keep a hundred dollars in, you give the employee money, they give you a receipt. You could track that as a bank account in here as well. Also if you use PayPal or Square or Bitcoin or any one of those other types of banking type accounts, those are just bank accounts you set up in QuickBooks, that's all those are. Okay. So here's how you're going to set up any new account. You'll notice in the bottom left it says account and there's a little arrow to the right. You're going to click on that and you're going to choose new. Now before I click new, just kind of notice here's where you would also edit an account, delete an account, or make an account inactive. You can't delete an account if you've ever used it, even if you've used it one time, so just kind of know that. So a good example might be if you had a bank account at a particular bank, and then let's say that you close that account and move to another bank. Those numbers in the old account still play into your report, so you can't delete it, but you could make it inactive, which basically just hides it from the list. But we're going to create a new bank account. Now on this screen, it asks you to pick the type of account you're creating. Notice if I choose bank, it gives me a couple of examples of what a bank account is right over here. Then I'm going to hit continue at the bottom. If I picked the wrong type on that previous screen, here's a chance to pick the correct type. 
So I get a second chance to pick the right type. Now when it comes to the account name, you can name it anything you want to call it. I can call it checking. I might call it operating account. I might have a payroll account. I might name it my bank's name. It really doesn't matter what you name it as long as you know what it is. Now if, obviously if you have two checking accounts, you wouldn't call them both checking. You would have one operating, one payroll, or whatever you want to call the two of them. This is not a sub-account of another. I'll tell you a little bit later what a sub-account is so it will be more of a visual for you. Description is totally optional. Someone would have to be on this screen to see the description. Now you also have a place to hold the bank account number and the routing number and these are not necessary just so you'll know. Even if you're downloading from the bank, these are not necessary. You'll plug that information in when you set up the online bank feeds. Now you do need an opening balance. So remember we talked about how to pick a start date. I would go ahead and get out your bank statement for the previous month and then go ahead and see what that ending balance is. That's the number you want to plug in here. So I'll just say it's $1,000. Notice I'm not typing dollar signs or a comma. It puts those in for me. Also, you'll need a statement ending date. So if I happen to buy QuickBooks in September and I decided I wanted to start with September 1st, that would certainly be okay. You just tell it what date you want to start with and then click OK. And by the way, if you start with a particular date, you can still enter something prior to that date. It just kind of has to have a date to start with. Now down at the bottom, just a little option here. If you're still writing checks and you want it to remind you when you get to a certain check number to go ahead and order some more, you can plug in that number here. And then you can also learn more about how to purchase checks from Intuit if you like. But remember I told you, you don't have to buy them from Intuit. You can buy them anywhere you like. Now you're going to see these three buttons everywhere in QuickBooks. You've got Save and Close. That means save this and put me on the window that was beneath this. Save and New means save this and put me on another window just like this. And of course you can cancel and get out of the whole thing. So I'm going to Save and Close. And by the way, this will pop up often when you're setting up new accounts. It's trying to get you to set up your bank feeds to do your online banking. We are going to talk about that a little bit later, so I'm going to go ahead and say no right here. And now you'll see that you have a bank account with a balance of $1,000. Now, by the way, for those of you who are used to debits and credits, notice the flip side goes to opening balance equity. Now, just a little FYI before we move on, one of the ways to get to the checking account register is if you're in this window, you can double click anywhere where it says checking and it takes you directly to the register. And there it is. And we'll be talking about registers in a later module as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close and get out of that. So you can see there that you now have a checking account. So let me go ahead and repeat that. We're going to set up a savings account. So I'm going to get down to account, new. It will be a bank account. I'm going to name it savings. And I'm going to enter an opening balance of $5,000. And I'll pick the same date. I'll pick September 1st. And you can see now I have a $5,000 balance. I'll go ahead and hit save and close at the bottom. I'm not going to set the bank feed right this second. But now you can see I also have a savings account with $5,000 in it. So you get the idea of how to create a new account. And by the way, if you're a right clicker, you could just right click to get to the same options right here. Okay? All right, so the next type that I want to talk to you about are your assets. Now, an asset is something your company owns that makes it more valuable. It could be you have a lot of furniture and equipment. It could be you have cars or automobiles. You might have land or buildings. Those are all considered assets to your business. A couple of terms you're going to hear often. You're going to hear fixed assets and you're going to hear liquid assets. So a fixed asset is something you plan to keep long term. I have a car and I'm going to keep it till it dies. A liquid asset or what QuickBooks calls as other current those are things that you currently have that make your business more valuable but you're going to get rid of. So inventory is a great example. I'm worth more right now because of the inventory in the back room but my goal is to sell it and get it out the door. 
Now this is the one place where your accountant is going to be very helpful because assets will appreciate or depreciate and your QuickBooks is not going to do that for you, okay? You're just going to create an account to hold the numbers that need to be plugged in. Your accountant is going to get with you and he or she is going to say how many vehicles did the business own? He or she is going to help you come up with a make, model, mileage, things like that and then you'll come up with a value of the total of those vehicles. That's a number that will be plugged into your asset account. When the depreciation happens, the accountant will tell you what numbers to plug in to have it minus that back out, or if you purchase another vehicle, you want to add that back in. So like I said, you're just creating the accounts to hold this information. That's all you're doing here. So like I said, get with your accountant on this, and then you can set those up. Now I will tell you that you're going to have big buckets here. These aren't going to be individual accounts per car, for example. So typically you'll see 10 or 11 of these. You might have one called vehicles. You might have another account called furniture and fixtures. Maybe another one called property if you have a lot of property. But don't create one for every single fixed asset you have because no one wants to read a four page profit and loss or the balance sheet. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so we're about almost 12 minutes into the video, so let me go ahead and stop it here. And there is a part two to this, so I will see you over there shortly. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see similar videos, click the subscribe button on the left, and I'll see you next week with additional videos.